All right, so we're continuing doing some hand done type work. See how it's kind of flowing and feels very hand done still. That's what I want. I'm using my pencil tool to modify. And because I want it to look hand done and like old typeface type, I don't want it to be too symmetrical, top to bottom, side to side. And it's funny, I'm actually fighting against the smoothness of the tools within Illustrator a little bit. Okay. And I'm always not thinking about the details, I'm thinking about the overall readability with my illustration. And at any time, I can just take a, a whole letter and change it and shift it and rotate it. These are the advantages of setting your own type. In fact, I might even try to fit the ampersand where the Y is. Because I don't need the D that big. And the I is going to take up almost no, no space at all. So I might change my sketch this way a little bit. Now, all I really need to do to, to make the eye what I want is just redraw all of its edges, right? But because it's the pencil tool, I have to start and stop on the, the path. So I have to do it in sections like that. And then I can just use the large selection tool, stretch it. Whoops, I want to stretch the whole thing. Tilt it a little, stretch it up. Then I might give it a slight serif. So the little kind of flares at the end of stems in type, those are called serifs. And traditional type has them. It helps readability somewhat. And modern typefaces, starting kind of most prominently with the Bauhaus typeface from the 1920s, I think designed in 1914, something like that. They didn't have any serifs. That's what we call sans serif type. So I'm, I'm doing something that's kind of in between. My D doesn't have serifs, my R doesn't have serifs, but my I does, my A does, my U kind of does. <laughs> so you choose your own. Notice that as you draw with the pencil tool around something with holes in it, if you overlap the hole, it reverses it. It kind of flips it, so you want to be careful of that. All right, the T is the one that's going to be kind of tricky and problematic. And one option might be this. In fact, I'm just going to be bold and try something. Use my eraser tool on the I. I'm going to cut it to be a lowercase I right there. I'm trying to be really bumpy. <laughs> that. Then I'm going to cut some holes in it. Now I'm going to get rid of this and I'm going to move this down. So even though I started with a downloaded typeface, that typeface didn't even have any lowercase letters. And lower case in the English language, even for Latin with these Roman letters, with the letter forms we use, wasn't invented until the ninth century. And it was a tool used by monks writing the first um, Christian illuminated manuscripts of the Gospels. 
under Charlemagne in the Carolingian Empire. So lowercase is actually called Carolingian minuscule. And the whole point of it was just so that you could fit more on a page. If you were spending your days in a monastery scriptorium, slaving over handwritten text all day. It was a great invention. The problem with Carolingian minuscule is it doesn't self-space. So capital letters self-space themselves nicely. Carol, uh, lowercase letters don't always. That's where, again, kerning becomes pretty important. Okay, now the T to fit this in. I'm going to change it quite a bit. I'm going to stretch it. Go. I'm going to tilt it ever so slightly so it doesn't look so perfect. Then I'm going to extend it lots of little ways. So this is one trick I like. I tried to show it with the A. But if you use your lasso and you select just one portion of your letter and then use the small selection tool, you can squeeze it. You see, I can kind of push them down and mostly keep it intact. It's not as good as the warp tool, but it's kind of a similar control where you can take just different portions and stretch them out. So I use the lasso tool and I grab one end to stretch. And then I want to take the whole thing and I think narrow it again. Oh, you see, that's only stretching my end. I have to deselect first. There we go. Whole T. Stretch. And each type solution you do is going to have slightly different problems, slightly different issues. That's why it's fun to play with. And why we do type as a, a part of this class. Even though you don't consider type design as a fine art application of digital art, for every gallery show I've done, there has been someone that has cut the vinyl signage for the show and I'm the one that provides the type for the show, right? So if I don't understand type design and I say, okay, my show is eternity and effervescence and my name is Carl Fry and I want it in Times New Roman. I don't care if it's uppercase or lowercase. It's just not going to look like a very professional s sticker on that gallery wall, right? than if I can actually design the signage. So even fine art has to have kind of a, a clear graphic communication side to it. OK, I'm liking that. Now I'm thinking I want to fit the Y in to go all the way up here and then fit the ampersand there. This is to show you, just because you sketch something, you don't need to stick to it. And my why, I'm thinking I'm going to make pretty unique. So I'm going to try all the tricks here. Because remember, pay attention to your first letters and your last letters. And this is why I lock them as I go. Because I'm going to take the top portion of this, use my small selection and shrink it down, compress it in like so. Then I'm going to take the bottom. Oh, I can see little artifacts on the T I have to clean up too. Select this. Actually, maybe this whole portion here. And shift it over. Like so. Maybe lift it up as well. Mm 
then take all of this. I'm just doing whatever I want with my type. Ah. So in this, used in this way, Illustrator is really quite powerful. A really fun and engaging tool, but then you'll often have to correct little issues. So I can take the top of the Y again, bring that down, underneath the T, and now I've got to obviously clean up a lot. Hmm, I'm actually thinking I want to go this way with it. Straighten out this part. <coughs> Curve around the other parts. <coughs> This might be really crazy. Let's just see. So the beauty of digital is you get to try things. And the beauty of being a student and doing this kind of work is you don't need to worry too much if it fails or not. You're not trying to please a client other than yourself. What do you guys think? Can I get rid of that as a Y? Or can I can I get away with that as a Y? <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good. You gotta yep, you gotta clean it up a little. You can see how the hole from the oops from the um, paper texture just totally got stretched out to where it became a line. So that's where the blob brush is gonna come in to clean that up. It's okay to have little bits of debris like these as part of your type if you want them. In fact, I kind of like those. So yeah, maybe. But um, just realize you have full control of them. So I'm going to use a blob brush because it is an unlocked, unlocked layer or unlocked path. It's all going to flow together. It's all still there. Okay. Widen this out a little bit. So remember, you can always use the blob brush to customize your type too. And for hand done, that might make a lot of sense. Okay, now I have nice room for an ampersand. I'm going to move that in. And I am very happy for specialized characters when type designers do them because they are the things I do not want to try to do by hand. They just look clunky. This is a good example of where shearing can help. To kind of fit it within the, the limitations that I have. So again, remember you always set preview and you can try sharing it a few different ways. 